day in the life of a ranger's dog would be that they go out on daily patrols, so they're actually patrolling with them. Um, it becomes the ranger's decision, how do I deploy that dog to be most effective? Does it go in patrol or do I wait for someone else to report a gunshot um, or find the spoor where I can put a fresh dog onto that spoor? So very often they're the first respondent and that's really important because they need to get that dog working on that spoor as soon as possible. As soon as a shot is fired or the spoor detected, the follow-up must begin. And with the amount of infiltrations and uh, incidences that take place in Kruger Park currently, there's a lot of work for every dog in the park, or every ranger dog for certainly. In terms of reaction, the important thing is that we always have a dog or two on standby that can get in the helicopter and fly to replace a dog that's tired um, and that they can continue that pursuit of those poachers that are hunting the rhino. The working conditions for the dog can vary from winter to summer. So you can expect in winter months the dog is going to work a lot longer because the, temp the ambient temperatures are fairly low. As we go into summer it becomes more and more challenging because the temperatures increase. We go up to 40 degrees in summer and then obviously you're not going to work the dog because if you extend that working time at temperatures above 30 degrees you're going to work it to death because he won't stop because he loves you and he wants to do the job. So the handler and the people running the operation have to take into account the dog's physical condition, the ambient temperature, the time of day that you're working. Otherwise you will work dogs to death there. I've worked in the police service for 22 years with dogs and three years now with Sandpox, so 25, 25 and a half years with dogs. For us, it's very effective. Uh, it brings us just that uh, little bit closer to the poachers. Much easier to, to get to them um, than human tracking. Certain places um, you can't track with the eye and then the dog takes over there with, with um, the scent ability. Uh, Obvious, we can't smell what, what they can smell. The dogs had, had very good successes in the, in, in the Kruger National Park. We've got very good uh, arrest um, statistics with the dogs and they, they're a crucial part of our operations. So the various types of dogs and that kind of projects we're looking at is the Foxhound project, looking at Foxhounds and Blue Ticks to start functioning as a pack. We have four Bloodhounds that are used on cold scent for man tracking. We have three foxhounds. We have the Belgium Shepherds, um, which we mainly use in a reaction force type of scenario where we know that we're going onto a scent that is less than three hours old. I think the most important thing when it comes to the dogs and the placement of the dogs is that we have a fully fledged package for the end user, whether it be a ranger or protection services within the park or a reaction team or the special rangers. So basically we've got to begin at the beginning and that's actually selecting a good handler, finding the right trainer and the dog, the right breed of dog that we want for a particular type of follow-up operation. All the breeds actually complement each other and it's really to find the right package that we need. But in terms of placing a dog at a ranger outpost, we need to kennel the dog, we need to feed the dog. We need to consider the animal health and the veterinary requirements to sustain the life of the dog and a good healthy life. A working dog that costs 50,000 Rand should at least have a lifespan or a working life of six to eight years. The man is also important, selecting the right handler to work with that dog is important. He must be driven, he must want to work with the dog, he must have knowledge and skills about the environment in which he works. Um, if he has a good tracking ability, a human tracking ability, visual tracking is, is also quite important but not necessarily essential because a man that tracks a lot visually and is a good man tracker and visual tracker sometimes is inhibited or inhibits the dog's ability because he starts wanting to reaffirm the spoor that he's tracking that indeed it is a spoor 
and the dog is actually tracking the scent where there may, may be no spoor. So bridging that gap and that knowledge to the handler is very important. Uh, within our environment, the dog team that is continually, repeatedly, daily following up and anti-poaching operations where there may or may not be shooting incidences, there is certainly post-traumatic stress issues that the dog experiences from shots fired. The dog becomes more sensitive. Um, we can lose dogs because of that from running away. Therefore, we've instituted um, some tracking collars on the dogs. The important thing is to have enough handlers and dogs that you can use in follow-up operations or in the field that when a particular dog team is tired or suffering from post-traumatic stress issues that you can replace them. That we're not continually utilizing the same person and the same dog over and over again. So there needs to be good rest periods between operations and deployments. Ranger dogs aren't pets, they are working dogs. Um, they become the handler's best friend and there is definitely a bond and a relationship between the handler and the dog. That's very important. Uh, but a lot of the dogs are trained to bite, to do tackle work. But what we do see is that the more the dog works with own forces, whether it be integrated with the police or the army or other rangers, they are able to distinguish friend from foe which is quite incredible. You can imagine sustaining eventually by the end of this year 44 dogs. Partnerships that we make are quite important. Um, having good veterinary support nearby is very important and we happen to be very fortunate within Sand Pass because in Skukuze we don't only have our own vet, veterinarians, we also have two state veterinarians and four technicians that can also look after animal health and help with inoculations like the veterinary requirements regarding rabies, uh, deworming, just the daily uh, occurrences. Retiring a working dog poses challenges but we have looked at it, we have had discussions of how to retire a dog and ideally we want the dog to retire with the dog handler or the dog handler to have the ability to take it home with him or retire the dog to his home um, that would be the first prize. Uh, the second prize would be to actually retire a dog to a home of an ex-dog handler from whatever environment he comes from, the military, the police, uh, prison services or from the private sector. Because a dog that is given its service needs to be looked after into retirement as we do.